makers of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carol Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. As you know, Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum is giving daily enjoyment to millions of people all over America. In offices and factories, on farms and ranches, in mines and oil fields, folks find that chewing Wrigley Spearmint helps them feel better and work better. The makers of Wrigley Spearmint Gum are glad that their product is proving helpful and enjoyable to so many people, and they're glad, too, that they're able to bring you Life with Luigi, because they know it's the kind of a radio program that millions of Americans enjoy. So here it is, Life with Luigi. And now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes about his adventures in America to his Mama Basco in it. Dear Mama Lisa, <laughs> the most wonderful thing in America is, uh, is how they work out the education. If you be 26 and 16 years old, you've got to go to school. After you're 16, then you can stop the school and be as stupid as you like. <laughs> But it is so nice to see all the little bambina going to school in the morning. And they all are bringing apples to the teacher. That's American custom. You bring apples for the teacher. And who knows? Some the teachers, they're so popular, they get enough apples to open up with their own push cart. <laughs> <laughs> One little boy, he's a passed by my story yesterday and must be shortage of apples because I heard him say he's going to give his teacher other piece of fruit. He's the say, if my teacher picks on me today, I'm going to give her the raspberry. <laughs> that shows the respect in America. Even if a teacher is no good, she's still to get something to eat. But to me, Mamma Mia, I'm so lucky and proud. I'm able to go to night school where I'm going to get to my good friends and the most beautiful teacher, Miss Spalding. Mamma Mia, she's a beautiful. When she's asking me a question and she's looking at me with these beautiful blue eyes, I'm not only forget the answer, I'm going to forget the question. <laughs> <laughs> but the reason I'm right to so much about a school is because now is the middle of the term. Tomorrow we're all taking a test and if we pass, we're going from a 2A to 2B. Well, I'm going to write to you more later. Right now is the time for me to go to my night to school. America, I love you. You like a papa to me from the ocean. All right, class, attention, please. I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Here. Mr. Howitt? Here. Mr. Olson? Hey, Mr. Schultz? Here, but I wish I was there. <laughs> Quiet, please. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, what did you mean by that remark? Oh, it's that final examination test tomorrow, Miss Spalding. The more I study, the more for shimmers I get. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Schultz, don't tell me you're afraid of a final examination. Who's afraid? I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Schultz, if you studied hard every night like I did, you would not be so nervous in yesterday now. For him, the size 36 body with the size 48 brain. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's not argue. I think we better review some general questions to find out just how much we've learned this term. Mr. Basco? Yes, sir, Miss Bully. Tell us something about the Boston Tea Party. The Boston a Tea Party. Uh, tea Party. Hmm, tea. <laughs> tea? Sure, with two lumps and no sugar, thank you. <laughs> Mr. Schultz. Well, Mr. Basco, what year did the Boston Tea Party take place? Uh... 1775. What did you say? I, I said uh, 1783. Are you sure? 1798. <laughs> no. 1853. Stop him, somebody, before he starts the Civil War. <laughs> all right, Mr. Schultz, you seem to know it all. You may tell us the year of the Boston Tea Party. Certainly. The Boston Tea Party, uh, July the 4th, 1776. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, that was the day of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Miss Spalding, would you deny them a little tea before they sign? 
<laughs> Never mind, Mr. Schultz. Uh, Mr. Horowitz, will you please answer the question? Why not? The Boston Tea Party. Now, let me see. You want the date, huh? Yes, I would like the date. Good. Well, I got the figure. You see, I got my own special system for remembering dates. Now, let me see. The Boston Tea Party was 1700 and something. Now, I ask myself, 1700 and what? So I remember my grandmother died when she was 78. From this, I got to take away six years, which gives me 72. And adding on 1700, I get the Boston Tea Party, 1772. <laughs> that is wrong, Mr. Harwick. <laughs> Mr. Baldy, you're going to tell me when my grandmother died. <laughs> Mr. Horowitz, the year was 1773, not 1772. Oh, what a pity, Horowitz. If your grandmother could have held on for one more year, your Well, that's life. Class, this is just terrible. If you can't answer such a simple question, I dread to think what will happen at tomorrow's examination. Uh, Miss Spaulding. I think you will feel better if you just call on me. Oh, well, all right, Mr. Olsen. The Boston Tea Party occurred on December 16th, 1773. A group of Boston patriots disguised themselves as Indians and threw about 350 chests of tea into the Boston Harbor. Very good. And Mr. Basco, why did they throw the tea into the harbor? They liked the coffee better. <laughs> no. Mr. Schultz? The tea bags was all used up? <laughs> no, no, no. Mr. Howitt. I can't get over my grandmother. Such a young... <laughs> oh, stop that, please. This is just disgraceful. When I look at my new pupils in the 2B class, only Olsen will be there. Oh, no, 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 Miss Polly. You're going to be in a 2B class? Without us, I, I'll quit school. Hey, well, Miss Polly, we don't want to be broken up. There's only one thing to do. What's that, study all night tonight? No, cheat a little tomorrow. <laughs> I smile, I'm only foolish. Mr. Schultz, I have news for you. You had better be on your best behavior tomorrow. I will not be in the room while this class is taking the test. Instead, Mr. Hine will supervise the examination. Not Mr. Hine. Oh, Mama, my hair's a suspect, and his eyesight is so good. <laughs> all I can tell you, class, is... Good evening. Uh, hello, Mr. Hine. I just thought I'd drop in and say a few words to your class. You mind? Oh, of course not. Go right ahead. Thank you. Men, I am going to supervise this class during the final examination tomorrow. I just want to warn you, I have a reputation for being strict. And that's just what I am. Strict, with a capital S. I will not stand for any cheating during the course of the examination. I will seat you three rows apart. Your eyes will always be down on your papers. And I shall be watching all the time. Any questions? Yes, why don't you stay home tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> You're Mr. Schultz, aren't you? Yes. You have a reputation for being a wisecracker, Mr. Schultz. Well, let's see you wisecrack your way past that examination tomorrow. Mr. Hein, I'm not afraid of tests, and I resent your insinuation that maybe I'm going to flunk. I said no such thing. But you hinted. I did not hint. And I think... Himmel, what am I doing arguing with the warden? <laughs> Good evening, Miss Spaulding. Uh, good evening, Mr. Hines. And don't worry, Miss Spaulding. I shall make doubly sure that the test tomorrow is conducted with absolute strictness and honesty. Honesty with a capital H. Oh, that Mr. Hines, I wish he would drop... Mr. Schultz. ...with a capital D. <laughs> well, if there's only one way we can pass tomorrow... Yeah, but, but how should... Get Mr. Hines drafted. <laughs> What do you think? You think a test is going to be very hard for us? Don't ask me, Luigi. It looks bad, that's all. And that Mr. Hine. Who, who, who? You can throw another who on the fire for me. <laughs> Once they rule out cheating in an examination, they take away Schultz's secret weapon. <laughs> well, uh, well, I'm going to study the very hard, but, but I would like to be sure we're all going to pass. It would be wonderful if, if we all are going to stay together in two big classes. Miss Spalding and, and all of us. Yo, huh? Yo, uh, yeah, but it really would. Yeah, but it don't. Uh, it don't look like it will. What should we do, boys? Smile, that's what. Into my head, an idea just pooped. <laughs> <laughs> if Mr. Hines thinks he's going to outsmart us, 
We're going to outsmart him. Yeah, but a house rules. We are not going to copy like a bunch of no good sneaky rats. No, you, no, you are talking, Schultz. Sure. Yeah, instead we are going to use a signal. <laughs> For instance, if I ask Mr. Hein, if I may leave the room, that's really going to mean I want the answer to question number one. Wonderful. And if somebody says it looks like it's snowing outside, that means give us the answer to question two. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're going to make up signals for 20 questions, and then the answers can be given out with all kinds of hints, you know, like whistles and zinging and toppings, etc. <laughs> oh, I feel like a convict planning a jailbreak. <laughs> Hello, we are going over the wall at 8 o'clock tomorrow night. <laughs> Just a second. Supposing someone does want to know one of the questions, do you think I will supply the answer? Well, we weren't going to ask you, Olsen, but as long as you volunteered, you are it. Yeah, that I don't know. <laughs> Gentlemen, I will not be a party to such questionable conduct. I have always prided myself on the solidity of my integrity, the honesty of my intentions. And as for my character, my record speaks for itself. We have just heard from the senator from night school. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, no, but wait, Mr. Schultz. I'll send you right there. But we was only thinking how much we would like to stay together. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way we, we have such a touch. Or besides, even if I did help you out, uh, I might give you the wrong answers. You wouldn't dare. <laughs> Olsen, you're going to go home tonight and study your brilliant little head off, and we are going to get the questions right tomorrow. <laughs> so, I think you had better do that. So, if any one of us is stuck, you could give the answer. Olsen, you know what you're doing. Yo, I, I'm sorry. If you leave it up to me, that's like turning the gas on, giving the class a rubber pipe, and saying, here, take a few pops. <laughs> Yo, I, I wouldn't like to, to see the class broken up, but... The, you're well. I'm sorry. Well, uh, well uh, cheer up, everybody. We're all going to study very, very hard the next uh, ten hours, and then, uh, then uh, maybe the future is uh, going to be good for us. Uh, sure, I can just see the future now. Olsen gets skipped. Horvitz stays here in 2A. Luigi gets left back in 1B. And me? I'm back in kindergarten cutting out paper dolls. <laughs> Before we return to Life with Luigi, here's a suggestion that will add enjoyment to your daily activities. Whether you're home, at work, shopping, or driving your car, chew a stick of delicious Wrigley Spearmint Gum from time to time. When you're chewing on a good, smooth piece of gum, you just naturally feel better because chewing helps relieve pent-up tension and gives you comfort and satisfaction. Besides, Wrigley Spearmint Gum has a lively, long-lasting flavor that tastes mighty good and freshens your mouth. So keep a package of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum handy wherever you go. See how chewing this delicious gum can make every day more enjoyable for you. And now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. And so, Mamma Mia, tonight the classes are taking a final examination. And right now, I'm a very busy studying. Well, it's not exactly studying. In America, it's called a cramming. This means you try to push in your head in the six hours or whether you couldn't have pushed in in the six months. <laughs> Last night, the Olsen was with the Schultz. And the Schultz was made Olsen to stay and listen to all the signals that we're going to use if we don't know the answers on the test. But the mamma mia, how we all want to stay together. Anyway, I um, hope you excuse me for making a letter very short uh, because I'm going to stop writing and start to study in some more. Alice Island was officially open in 1890, 1890, 1890. Alice Island was officially open... Luigi, my friend! <laughs> hello, Luigi, hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. Hey, that's a quick hello. Yeah, I'm studying. Oh, learning your BVDs, a little banana <laughs> now. Please, Pasquale, I'm, I'm very busy. You mean you're too busy to have a little chits and a chats with your good friend Pasquale? 
That's too bad. Nobody should be too busy to relapse. <laughs> That's the cause of so many people are dropping dead like a flies from a heart burn. <laughs> Gola was a discovered in a California, California, California. That's right. Gola, Gola, Gola was a discovered in a California, brought it to Chicago, and now most of it's under Pasquale's a mattress. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Pasquale, please, please. Gola was a discovered in a California, and the Pasquale's a mattress. Hey, now look, look at what you're doing. You see, you're mixing them all up. Pasquale, please, please stop. Civil of water. 1861, 1865, uh, uh, Luigi, yeah. I gotta laugh when I see you trying to push a lot of books into that soft little pumpkin head. That's why you're making me mad. I'm gonna learn all these facts about 8 o'clock tonight. What's the use to push all that stuff in your head, Luigi? One good sneeze, you're right back where you started. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm got no time for jokes. If you don't mind, please come around and be funny some other time. Well, that's a fine way to talk. All right, I go. But it won't do you no good to study. Once a maroon, always a maroon. <laughs> but if that's so, well, I'm going to show you. I'm going to pass the test and I'm going to get the promoted. Get it promoted. Get it promoted. That's all you could have taken. Sure, well, what else is more important? Get it married. <laughs> you want to think about dates, think about a date with my daughter Rosa. I'm just interested in the history, so go by. <laughs> 1776, a decoration in the peninsula, Louisiana, Louisiana, the 1800 trees. August 23rd, 1921. Huh? 1921, August 23rd, what's happened to this day? Biggest thing what could have happened. What's that? The day my Rosa was born. <laughs> Big enough? Too big. <laughs> well, then an event in a steamboat, 1802. You mean 1812? And the Columbus discovered America in 1905, and in 1774... Stop, Pasquale, stop, stop! You're mixing me all up. Sure, you know straight now, you bachelor hood, I'm going to mix up your school. All right, I'm not going to pay attention to you. Alice Island, 1890. Alice Island, 1950. Columbus Avenue is a stop at 59. <laughs> Boys, I'm getting nervous. I wish Mr. Hine would come in already and give out the examination papers. What examination papers? For us, it's the execution paper. Hey, <laughs> uh, do you think uh, you know enough to pass? Luigi, look at these dark circles under my eyes. Do you see them? Yeah. I was up all night studying. Every half hour, my wife gave me black coffee to keep me awake. I drank and drank and drank, and guess what happened? What? In the morning, the only thing I could remember was the name of that coffee. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, everything comes out like that, you know. Columbus came over on three ships. The Nina, the Pinta, and the Sanca Maria. <laughs> Classmates, right now you are looking on the most wide awake imbecile in America. <laughs> what about you, Luigi? Well, uh, well, I'm, I don't know. Pasquale was about me all day and he's got me all mixed up. Well, we still got our fighting chance. <laughs> hey, give me what? What are you all looking at me for? We ain't admiring your beautiful blue eyes, sweetheart. <laughs> Over that hole, you have Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Mr. Hyde. Hello, Old Mr. Devil's Hyde. Island himself. <laughs> <laughs> Luigi. Yes, yes. Here is a picture of my wife and children. Huh? If I don't come back alive, promise me you're going to take care of them. <laughs> all right, all right, enough of that. I'll stand for no whispering or talking out of turn from this moment on. Men, I need hardly remind you that this is a final examination. And I expect each one of you to keep his eyes on his own paper. Now, I warn you, don't try any tricks. I've got eyes in the back of my head. His nose would look better there, too. <laughs> I heard that remark, Mr. Schultz. One more word spoken without permission, and I'll ask you to turn in your examination paper. Is that clear? Yes, Sergeant. I, I mean, Mr. Hyde. <laughs> All right. The examination is officially started now. I shall pass out the papers. You have exactly one hour to complete the test. Remember, absolute silence. If you want anything, ask me. Now, begin! <laughs> <laughs> Six, seven, five, 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 six
Uh, uh, Mr. Hines. Yes? I would like to leave the room. <laughs> what? So soon? <laughs> One has got nothing to do with the other. <laughs> I would like to leave the room, too. And may I also like to leave? This is ridiculous. None of you may leave. You hear me? But I got to leave the room. <laughs> I got to. <laughs> me too. That's right, me too. I have never seen anything like this. And you, Mr. Olson, I suppose you would like to leave the room too. No. But, uh, uh, well, uh, my wife bought a dress for $17.76. What? <laughs> What's your wife's dress got to do with leaving the room? Maybe he wants to go out and try it on for her. <laughs> enough. That's enough. All right, Mr. Schultz. Huh? Leave the room for a minute and be right back. And then someone else may go. Well, what's stopping you, Mr. Schultz? I don't have to go anymore. <laughs> What? Neither do I. <laughs> Neither do me. <laughs> I... Well, this is the strangest behavior. Now, what could have caused you all to change your mind? Uh, maybe because it's cold outside. Yeah, that's it. I just cold. Yeah, yeah, it, uh... It looks like snow. <laughs> Doesn't it, Olsen? <laughs> uh, wait, uh, I will look. Oh, great, great look, look. Great look. Great look. Great look. Well, what about it? It's funny that they don't look like snow so much as it, uh, it has more the, the, the color of uh, 1890 French dressing. <laughs> I never heard such disjointed, unattached, ridiculous statements in all the statements. Let me see that paper. Uh oh, we are zonk. Revolution, 1776. Ellis Island, 1890. Address for $17.76, eh? 1890. Oh, please, Mr. Heinrich. Don't Lundin. you interrupt me and don't try to interfere. I don't care what his motives or desires were. What? Mr. Oates, nobody asked you to volunteer any information. And in your paper, while the class continues, you deliberately disregarded my orders. I'll see that you are expelled for cheating on an examination. <laughs> All right. No matter what the happens, we all are going to stay together, huh? Good. And this is why we're here at the Mr. Heinz's house, huh? Remember? All right, we remember. Just ring the bell. Louis. Boys, are you sure this is the right house? So positive. Can't you see him through the window there? Yeah. He's reading a book. A thousand and one ways to torture a pooper. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm, I'm going to ring. Yes? Uh, Mr. Mr. Hein, we're coming to tell you something very important. I am busy, gentlemen. You may see me tomorrow before my regular class begins. This is my home. Good night. Now, please, please, Mr. Hein, you got to listen. You, you can't expel Olsen from the school. It would break his heart. And we, we want to stay together, Mr. Hein. Was it not Olsen's fault? It was ours. It was mine. I started the whole thing. Well... I must admit that's very soldierly of you to admit to such a charge. And then, and then are you not going to expel Olsen? Well, I'm going to ask the principal to soften the punishment. Oh, I oh, I Instead, I shall ask that Mr. Olsen merely be demoted to 1B. What? What? <laughs> Hi, class. Here's the situation. The three of you got passing grades in the examination, and you are promoted to my class in 2B. Uh-huh. And yeah, what good is that? Old name, Rizzo. That is not my fault. No, but please. Miss Balding, please. 
Give us a little push up the stairs at all. Now, you know that's out of my hands. Our principal, Mr. Orth, is talking to Mr. Olson right now, and his decision will be made at any moment. <coughs> Hello, Miss Balding. Good evening, class. Good, Good evening, Mr. Orth. I've uh, just spoken to Mr. Olson. Naturally, it was uh, immediately apparent that he's more than qualified to go ahead. It's therefore with great regret that I have to make my decision. Oh, uh, glad. And I'll have to wait to Mr. Orth to please it. Don't say it. There's nothing I can do about it. Miss Balding, after going over your students' grades last week... I had decided to skip Mr. Olson to the third grade, but inasmuch as Mr. Hind has requested me to demote him, I have to strike a balance. Mr. Olson, I can't skip you. Instead, you'll just go ahead to 2B with the others. Huh? With the others? Oh, Ain't that terrible? <laughs> <laughs> the first news I ever heard. I jump in the minute. I was never so disappointed in my life. <laughs> Uh, is a cat that sort of thing. I went to do it again. <laughs> Miss Baldy, I've never seen such behavior. What kind of a class do you have? Mr. Joyce, they're the craziest class in America, but I love them. <laughs> I'm now got a plenty of time to finish this letter. Here are the whole class is it together again. Yep, Miss Balding, Schultz, Horowitz, Olsen, and Abasco. Together. It's a little bit of America. All of us. And I like all America, Mamma Mia. I hope we always stay together. Your loving son, Luigi Basco, the little immigrant. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you've enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi, and they'd like to remind you that when you want a between-meal treat, Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is just about the perfect answer. A stick of Wrigley's Spearmint is chock-full of lively, delicious, real spearmint flavor. Without being rich or spoiling your appetite, it satisfies you and helps tide you over till meantime. So for a tasty treat between your meals, and one that's not only good, but also good for you... Chew healthful, refreshing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. Get a few packages of Wrigley's Spearmint next time you go to the store. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is directed by Mr. Howard. Mac Benoff writes the script with Lou Dermott. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Lee as Pasquale, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Tom Conley as Schultz, Mary Ship as Miss Balding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, and Ken Peters as Olsen. Music is under the direction of Lud Gluck. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting.